So saya letak short form ya. In the nucleus is your positive charge. So why is in the nucleus your positive charge? Because you have the presence of your proton and neutron. So dia adalah daya tarikan. Okay. And first question of the day. Were your number of proton change? Yang masuk lambat tadi. Aiman Saad. Aiman, yes? Uh, yes, madam. Were your number of proton change? Apa tadi yang saya lain dekat dekat situ? Okay. Were the number of proton change? Akan berubah atau tak berubah? Uh, tak berubah. Proton number will never change. Benda dalam tangan kamu first thing. Macam kita belajar dalam topik one, back to the same basic, proton number shall never change bermakna banyak mana positive charge yang kamu ada dalam nucleus dia akan kekal. Ingat benda ni, topic three you'll come across the same thing. Alright? And then next, I have all the red dot over here. I have all the red dot over here. All this red dot is your electron. All this red dot is your electron that carry the negative charge. So kenapa your atomic model, this thing, kenapa it will stay intact? Kenapa dia akan jadi satu model? Because in your center, you have your nucleus that holding positive charge. And this positive charge, kawan kat luar tu semua negative. Daya tarikan, force of attraction, positive charge and the electron negative akan wujud daya tarikan. Over here, between all your nucleus and your electron, semua ni, between all the nucleus and your electron, there is one thing that I want to introduce over here, force of attraction. Mesti akan ada daya tarikan. Sebab so one to positive, so one to negative. Okay? And the last thing in this model that I want you to know adalah line ini, setiap satu line tersebut, is what we call, what do we call this? What do we call this? Diana? Diana? Bawa bangun kat subuh ke tak? Oh, yang apa ni? Haris? Energy level. Energy level. Natasha, lagi? Orbit. Orbit. Azri, lagi? Azri, orbit energy level lagi? Um. One more. One more. Mula dengan huruf S. Your dad, your dad. This morning, your dad. Iman? Thank you. Dia adalah petala bahasa Melayu kamu. Alright, I believe many of you using English, uh, BM. So, dalam bahasa Melayu, dia nama petala and over here, we use shell, orbit or energy level. You will hear me using a lot of shell and energy level. Alright, kamu akan banyak dengar saya guna shell atau energy level. And we have a symbol over here adalah sama dengan N berapa. So, simbol yang kita akan guna adalah N kalau kamu ingat. Azri. Alright. Yang paling dekat dengan nucleus, this one. N sama dengan berapa? N equals to satu. N equals to one. N equals to one mesti bermula dengan petala yang duduk paling dekat dengan nucleus. In the other words, guys, we will start counting from the nucleus. Ingat yang tu. Alright, jangan salah yang tu. Okay. Selalu budak bila kira tu dia, dia lupa dunia. Jangan lupa dunia. Ingat kita sentiasa kira daripada nucleus. Nucleus adalah center point bermakna kita akan kira dari, dada, dari dalam ke luar. So N equals to 1 mesti adalah dari nucleus. Okay, so that is the basic term that you will come across. Who made up this atomic model is a guy named Neil Bohr. So anak lelaki lain kali boleh panggil Muhammad Neil, Muhammad Bohr. So pandai sikit lah. Pandai kimia. Alright. 
Yelah daripada Muhammad Azri tapi tak boleh jawab. Baik Muhammad Neil. Alright. So you have your both postulate over here. First question back to Azri. How many postulate Bo have? Four. Four. I have four postulate. Do you want to give me the first one? Uh, mic saya, mic. Azri, first one. Um, the first one. What's there? Or anyone? How much can lupa yang first one? So let's see the second one, the third one, or the fourth one. Electron move in circular orbit around the nucleus. All right, electron move in circular orbit around the nucleus. Thank you, Go. Electron move in a uh, circular orbit around the nucleus. Okay, that is your first one. Anisha Hira, second. Anisha Hira, second. In the permitted orbit, energy associated with electron motion is quantized. All right. In the other words, saya simplified kan lah. All right. Yang kamu tu kamu baca dan nota je kan. I knew it. So, the second one is basically electron at specific energy level. All right. At specific N will have specific energy. All right. Every electron will sit in a specific end. Dia akan duduk pada shell yang tertentu. Dan elektron yang duduk pada shell yang tertentu akan ada tenaga yang tertentu. Alright? When I use the word specific means kita boleh kira. Sekejap lagi kita akan, kita akan tengok uh, macam mana kita boleh kira. Okay? The third one, fun sini. No energy is observed or released by the electron when it is at ground state. Okay. When the electron at ground state. All right. When the electron at ground state means that the electron is at the specific energy level tadi. Adakah ground state bersamaan dengan satu? Class? No. 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 So, saya nak ingatkan satu benda je. Bila saya kata ground state, ground state is not necessary equals to one. Dia boleh jadi satu, tapi dia tak semestinya jadi satu. Alright? Not a must untuk duduk pada satu. Ground state setiap orang berbeza. Okay, ground state saya. Ketinggian saya satu, saya rendah je 152 cm. So, ground state saya 152 cm. Alright? And then, knowledge might be 180. I, I don't think you're 180, but just assume you're tall, you know, guys. Alright, knowledge is 180. So, ground state knowledge adalah 180. So, ground state everybody akan berbeza ikut elektron tersebut. So, if the electron remain at ground state, electron stay at ground state, okay? Electron remain at ground state, no energy changes. Alright, bila dia kata no energy absorb or release means no energy changes. Okay? And last but not least, Aiman. Energy is emit or absorbed by electron when transmit to another energy level. Okay. Energy will be released or absorbed. Okay. Kat sini saya nak tanya banyak. Energy boleh di absorb, energy boleh di release. My question. Energy absorb means uh, Cua dah. N final lagi tinggi ataupun elektron tu jatuh atau elektron tu naik? Oh, elektron naik. Electron move up. Dan bila electron move up, Syuhada, bermakna N final lagi besar atau lagi kecil berbanding N initial? Lagi besar. N final must be higher than your lagi N besar. initial. Thank you. Betul, class? Another question. Lau, what happened to the delta E? Symbol, positive, positive or negative? Positive. 
Kat sini saya nak kamu pay attention. Alright, thank you. Saya nak kamu pay attention sikit. We have two over here. Energy boleh absorb, energy boleh release. You tak boleh, you kena tahu energy absorb means what. You kena tahu energy release means what. We would, we would need this in your calculation later on. So, what Lau said just now, delta E adalah positive based on apa yang Syuhada cakap, kenapa dia positive? Sebab dia absorb. Whenever you say that the energy is being absorbed, delta E mesti positive. And again, the symbol positive negative over here is not about the value. Dengan kata lain, it's a must. Okay? Bila kita ada simbol positif negatif dalam kimia sayang, jawapan akhir mesti kena ada. Sebab kalau tak ada, saya tak tanda. Kita pangkau, tak dapat maka. The positive is not showing that it's the positive number. It's showing that how much energy is being absorbed. So make sure you know that. Okay? Next. Sharifah. Sharifah Nurina. Yes. Energy release means the electron is... Uh, drop. Electron drops. In the other words, your N final must be? Smaller than N initial. Yes. Alright. Your N initial must be tinggi sebab electron jatuh. Uh, saya, saya nak ingatkan sekali lagi, nucleus adalah tengah kita. Nucleus adalah permulaan kita. Alright. Bila saya kata electron up tadi, kita kata electron moving up means daripada nucleus yang dekat dengan nucleus move up. Itu maksud electron move up. Okay, bila saya kata electron move down, apa yang uh, Sharifah kata tadi, electron move down means yang daripada jauh turun balik. So, nucleus adalah center point. Always ingat kita kena bergerak dari nucleus. Okay, so yang bergerak jatuh ini means dari jauh balik dekat dengan nucleus, that is your electron drop where n final must be higher than your n initial. Therefore, Anis, Anis Izzati, Delta E. Negatif. Negatif. And macam biasa, negatif saya tak pernah risau sebab bila tekan kalkulator, negatif keluar. So, kamu akan salin sekali negatif tu. Tapi yang akan jadi problem yang akan tinggal is the positive. So, make sure ada. Dengan kata lain, bila dalam otak kamu nak kira delta E, rambut kali ni potong tak elok lah weh. I cut myself. I spent like three hours in the toilet yesterday. It's so hard to cut mirror image. I cannot keep my hair long because I will have rashes all over. Very, very sensitive skin. Okay, sorry, but it just looks so bad. Come back to your Delta E. <laughs> all right, your Delta E over here, saya. Uh, delta E saya tak pernah kisah sebab Delta E kamu akan keluar negatif tu. So, uh, salin je lah. Just positif tu tolong letak. Dalam otak kena fikir satu benda. Bila ada Delta E sebagai jawapan akhir, Positive sign, negative sign mesti kena ada kat jawapan akhir tu. So, kena simpan benda tu dalam otak. Okay? Alright, so that is the ball postulate. And I already put them in the arrangement. Why I love to put them in the form of arrangement 1, 2, 3. Uh, it's not fixed. It's not really a fixed one to put it in the form of 1, 2, 3, 4. Tapi, it's the storyline. You have this right in your notes? So, it's actually the story why we have this model. Okay? Somebody in the history, alright, sebelum Bo adalah manusia tak tahu siapa, stated that, that is the nucleus. And somebody sebelum Bo have stated that in the nucleus, that is proton. Ni orang lain. Orang lain yang cakap dulu. Kita tak perlu tahu siapa. So, orang tu dah cakap kat tengah tu adalah proton. Dia dah jumpa dah proton duduk kat nucleus, nucleus duduk kat tengah, tak bergerak. So, duduk kat situ diam-diam. And what Bo trying to say mainly is about the electron around the nucleus. If you realize the entire Bo postulate, your entire atomic model is talking only about one thing, the electron. So, bila kamu kata energy level drop, bila kamu kata energy uh, final, initial bergerak, turun, jatuh, semua tu, it's not the energy bergerak way, it's the electron bergerak. And when we talk about energy, energy siapa? Electron. So everything about here is only talking about one thing, guys. The electron in the model. Okay? So the first one, the electron move in a circular orbit around the nucleus. Yang ni kamu lukis dulu. Kamu lukis, ada nucleus. Lepas tu kamu lukis, ada X, ada X. Kenapa duduk ke atas line tu? Sebab elektron akan duduk atas ni. 
Alright? So, kita akan masuk 2.2 nanti. Masuk kat 2.2 kita akan cerita kenapa dia dua. So, pada petala kedua pula, kamu ada 8 elektron. So, this is what we mean by the electron will move in a circular orbit around the nucleus. Circular orbit around the nucleus bermakna dia hanya boleh duduk di atas line tersebut. Alright, dia hanya boleh duduk di atas line tersebut. Dia tak boleh duduk, dengan kata lain, dia tak boleh duduk di sini. Dia tak boleh duduk di sini. No. When we say circular around the orbit means the electron must be sitting on the orbit. Seperti apa yang kamu duduk lukis all this while. Okay, that is the first one. So, you wujudlah benda tu. The second one, pernah tak fikir kenapa elektron akan duduk atas line tu? Kenapa dia tak duduk macam tadi Miss Wong tulis? We always say that electron keep moving, betul? Kita selalu cakap electron keep moving, electron will be non-stop moving. Kenapa elektron tak move duduk kat tengah-tengah? Kenapa elektron nak duduk atas line tu je? Reason, because in every orbit, in every single orbit that you have, Alright, setiap satu petala yang kamu ada ni, dia ada tenaga tertentu. Dan siapa yang boleh duduk atas tenaga tu? Elektron yang mempunyai tenaga yang sama. So why we say in a permitted orbit, alright, the energy with the electron is quantized. Quantized mean fixed. Dia ada satu specific amount. Dan kenapa ada satu specific amount? Reason senang, nucleus. Nucleus yang pegang positif, Bila saya tarik elektron, alright, elektron saya bila dia ada specific energy, katakan 10 kilojoule. 10 kilojoule adalah negative charge. So, saya ada nucleus, 10 kilojoule duduk jarak 10 meter. Alright, as long as elektron tu sekarang ada 10 kilojoule, katakan eh, dia ada 10 kilojoule, dia akan circular the orbit, circular the nucleus pada jarak yang sama. Betul? Sebab daya tarikan sama. Sebab saya ada tenaga yang fix. So, elektron saya yang mempunyai tenaga yang fix akan bergerak daripada nukleus jarak yang sama sentiasa. Kenapa sentiasa jarak yang sama? Sebab elektron tu ada tenaga yang fix. So, katakan kalau elektron saya ada tenaga yang lain. So, let's say my electron right now having more energy. 20 kJ. So, 20 kJ means I have my nucleus. My nucleus won't change. Duduklah kat tengah tu dan diam. So, I have my electron sitting this far. So, this electron right now is 10, uh, 20 kJ. So, bila 20 kJ tenaga, dia boleh duduk jarak ni. And the 20 kJ is not changing. So, dia akan bergerak daripada jarak yang sama lah. Betul? That's why you have that orbit. Kenapa dia akan sentiasa daripada jarak yang sama? Sebab tenaga dia sama. So, dia akan sentiasa bergerak daripada jarak yang Sama. Okay, that's why you have the orbit. Okay, kenapa orbit kamu bukan zigzag? Kenapa orbit kamu bukan macam ni? Kenapa orbit kamu bukan macam ni? Takkan jadi. It will never be like that. It will never be like that because we have the fixed amount of energy. So, bila fixed amount of energy, tenaga dia mesti adalah fixed, jarak dia mesti adalah fixed. Okay, setakat ni. Benda yang sama kan kamu dengar tu. Next. Okay. No energy is absorbed or released when the electron at ground state. Standard lah. Selagi tak ada perubahan tenaga, saya ada nucleus, jarak saya macam ni. Selagi elektron saya pegang 20 kJ, selagi tak ada perubahan tenaga, dia akan duduk kat situ jarak yang sama. Selagi dia adalah 20 kJ, dia akan bergeraklah dari jarak 20 kJ. Tapi kalau tiba-tiba tenaga saya berubah. Then you move on to the fourth one. Energy is emitted or absorbed by an electron when it transmit. Bermakna when you have electron and the electron started to move with energy changes. So, bila dia bergerak, dia mesti akan ada energy changes. Okay. For example, let's move up first. Move up, mesti daripada N sama dengan 1 kah? Mesti daripada N sama dengan 1? Bila saya kata move up, no? Yes? No? No? No. Nabil kenapa lambat? Nabil kenapa masuk lambat? Uh, internet tadi tadi. Bagi tadi internet mati. 
Eh, internet tu tak mati weh. Tapi kalau hang masuk lambat lagi hang mati ah. Tak mati. Hang bangun subuh tak? Bangun. Saya pagi okay. tadi cari internet. Tak apa. Alright. So when n equals to uh, when you say electron is moving up it's not equals to it's not necessary n equals to 1 so teacher tak nak mula dengan n equals to 1. Let's say Miss Wong mula dengan n equals to 3. And I move the electron up. So over here adalah n equals to 3. Over here adalah n equals to 5. Bergerak naik. Betul. Nabil, bila bergerak naik, energy over here, delta E, positif or negative? Uh, positif. Positif, why? Uh, energy... Energy level increase. Mm -hmm. Energy level increase. Okay. Positive stand for what? Positive. The positive stand for what? Mm. Change of energy. Mm, no. I know. Absorb. absorb energy is being absorb konsep saya senang je weh naik tangga ni adalah nucleus ni adalah kamu berdiri kat bangunan bawah sekali ok lepas tu kamu nak naik tingkat satu kamu nak naik tingkat dua kamu nak naik tingkat tiga kamu nak naik tingkat empat kamu nak naik tingkat lima bila naik tangga guna energy ke release energy Gunalah. Betul. Nak naik tangga kan? Guna tenaga lah kan? So, bila kamu naik tangga, kamu akan guna tenaga. Dan bila guna tenaga, you absorb. You absorb means positive. Wise versa. Alright? Wise versa. Kalau kamu jatuh. So, saya guna balik elektron yang sama. N equals to 5. Dan kalau Miss Wong nak jatuhkan elektron ni, I drop all the way to N equals to 2. Okay? So, bila kamu dah naik sampai atas, Miss Wong tak suka, Miss Wong tolak kamu balik turun. Tolak tau. Bukan jalan turun. Saya tolak kamu turun. So, bila saya tolak kamu turun, kamu akan menjerit sebab sakit. Alright? So, that is the energy release in the form of sound energy. Sebab saya tolak kamu turun, kamu akan golek turun. Ah, turun tangga. So, you release energy in term of sound. So, you release energy. Delta E adalah negative. Okay? Benda ni wajib tau. Then this four postulate is the reason why we are using this atomic model until today. And why is postulate kenapa bukan teori? Apa beza postulate dengan teori? Pernah terfikir? What, why is a bold postulate? Anybody? Dah proven. Belum proof lagi. Uh, it's been proven but it's not 100% being correct. It's proven. Alright, I believe Bo made a lot of things to prove this for postulate. Tapi kenapa kita panggil postulate? Postulate is more on like, it's a bit better than hypothesis. Hypothesis is not proven. Now watch. Hypothesis is we made and kita tak buat lagi. Itu hypothesis. But postulate is a bit better, higher level than your post hypothesis. Tapi tak sampai teori. Sebab dia ada kelemahan. Walaupun dia ada kelemahan, but this is still the best that we have until today. So, kalau satu hari Norwesh kata, oh, Norwesh have a Norwesh uh, atomic theory, then okay lah. Then you prove everything correctly. Yes, you still can make it better. If you come up with something better, you can easily tolak apa yang Bo cakap. Tapi look like lepas Bo tak ada siapa make anything better. Okay, so we are still using it until today, even though dia ada kelemahan. Okay, that is uh, the reason why it's a poor postulate. Duka cita. Kena hafal. Antara soalan favorite, state the ball postulate. Alright? Dan saya rasa saya dah bagi ayat yang paling senang. So short, precise, simple, gunalah ayat tu. Okay? Alright? And blah blah blah, dia takkan suruh explain sangat. Dia takkan suruh explain saya rasa. Ball postulate explain. No. Saya rasa dia takkan suruh explain. Dia akan suruh kamu state je ball postulate. So hafal je lah. Untuk saya tak payah hafal pun. Kalau kamu boleh lukis structure tu, kamu tahulah. That's why I explain. Okay? Tak payah hafal sangat pun. If you know the story, then you should be able to write it out. Okay? 
Kalau saya nak kamu hafal, saya tak explain dah tadi. Okay. And this is what you've been drawing in school. This is what you've been drawing in school. And in my notes, you will come across a lot of this. Saya senang je. Mana senang nak lukis? Lain lah. Betul. Guna pun baris lagi senang nak lukis bulat. So, two things over here is the same. Just saya nak ingatkan, they are exactly the same. This is the atomic model that you've been drawing. Lulu kamu boleh lukis yang ni. Kenapa Lulu masa SPM tak lukis yang ni, Miss Wong? Sebab Lulu kat SPM, kamu paling banyak dua petala. Paling, paling, paling banyak tiga. Betul? So, nak letak, nak lukis tiga bulatan, tak ada masalah. Lukislah atomic model tu. Tapi kat sini, you might come across n equals to five, six, seven and so on. Han nak lukis tujuh bulatan. Han sure. So, masuk exam lukis bulatan je lah. Okay. So, we are not using atomic model over here to answer the question. It's not because it's wrong. It's only because it's not compatible to our question. Alright. So, we come across one thing over here called energy level. Okay. Looking at our energy level over here. First and foremost, how to read the energy level. Simple. Your nucleus is here. Your nucleus is actually here. And how to read it is when you cut through your atomic model into half. Okay, when you cut through your atomic model into half, ambil bagian atas. Nucleus duduk sini kan? Nucleus duduk bawah. So, N equals to 1. N equals to 2. N equals to 4. N equals to 5. N equals to 6. Blah, blah, blah. So, your atomic model and your energy level, they are equal to each other. Okay? Alright? So, I let me swap. Pertama. Energy level must start with N equals to 1 or you can start with N equals to any that you want. Adriana? N equals to 1. Alright? For this one, you, you must. Bila saya kata must tu, hang jangan main dengan saya lah. You must start with N equals to 1. Remember? Building just now. Alright. Boleh tak buat bangunan tanpa tingkat 1 tapi ada tingkat 2? Kita takkan panggil yang tu tingkat 2 lah. Kita panggil tingkat 2 yang kamu lukis tadi tingkat 1 lah. Betul? Alright. Your nucleus is the ground state. Muka bumi. So bila kamu buat bangunan, kamu tak boleh ada bangunan yang tiba-tiba tingkat 3 tapi 1 dengan 2 tak ada. Oh, we, we don't call that tingkat 3 lah saya. So, you must always start with N equals to 1 no matter you are using it or not. Sometimes we are not using it. Sometimes you might be using N3 to N5 and then N5 to N2. But then, we are not even using it. But your energy level dalam exam kalau lukis akan dapat satu maka. Kamu tak jawab apa lagi sayang kamu lukis je. So, jangan lukis salah. First. Second. Walaupun kita tahu kita mesti start dengan energy level 1, N equals to 1, you must label every single energy level that you draw and they must according to the increasing number. Tak boleh skip mana-mana number sama ada kita guna atau tak guna. You must start from 1 all the way until nak berhenti kat mana, yang tu ikut soalan. Boleh berhenti kat 5, boleh berhenti kat 6, boleh berhenti kat 7. Good news. N initial not necessary. Alright, and final sampai kat infinity not necessary. Boleh berhenti takat mana yang kita nak guna. Yang tu boleh. Alright. Kamu hanya nak sampai N sama dengan 7. Soalan sampai N sama dengan 7. N sama dengan 7, that's it. Tak payah lukis 8. Tak payah bazi masa. Okay. So, you can stop that. But you must start with one and you must label. Next thing. Next important thing. If you look at your energy level, what is the main thing when you draw that you must insist? Natasha? Bila kamu lukis selain daripada N sama dengan 1, selain daripada kena label? Tengok, tengok. Sorry? Apa lagi yang penting selain daripada label, selain kena start dengan N sama dengan 1? Lukis line. 
<laughs> lukis line of course sayang <laughs> uh, lukis line guna pembaris okay of course sayang it's all about the lines ni saya dah bagi dah ni Haifa 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 ah. So what is the next important thing in the energy level when you draw your energy level except uh, other than you need to label n equals to 1 and so on apa lagi yang penting sangat penting Benda kecil je. Benda kamu nampak sebenarnya saya yakin. Elektron ada. Elektron tak ada. Saya tak lukis elektron lagi. Just the energy level without the elektron, without the anything. Distance medium. Uh, distance okay. means. Distance Sampai? between and. Distance yeah. between yeah. the energy level. Thank you. Boleh. When you look at your your energy level over here, kita bagi dia clean sikit. Alright. If you look at your energy level, you have your n equals to 1. Okay, you have your n equals to 2. Look at the distance, guys. Penting. Sangat penting. The distance between n equals to 1, this way. Okay? The distance between n equals to 2 to n equals to 3, this way only. n equals to 4 to n equals to 3, even smaller. Benda yang kamu nampak, mungkin kamu rasa tak penting tapi sangat penting. Jarak antara setiap energy level dari bawah sampai ke atas, jarak dia kena makin kecil. Kecil banyak mana? Perlu ukur ke? Tak perlu. Tapi mata kasar saya kena nampak lebih kecil. Bila Miss Wong kata mata kasar nampak lebih kecil, bermakna Han jangan bagi tahu kat saya, teacher, it's kecil by 1mm. Aku sepak kepala otak Han. Alright? When I say kecil means saya nampak tu, saya kena nampak kecil dah. Bukan saya kena ukur. Faham? And very, very important. The gap between each energy level must get smaller. So, bila kamu lukis, gap tu kena penting. Okay? Sangat-sangat penting. Boleh? We will be using a lot of this energy level. Sometimes you will come across the energy level N sama dengan satu, dia tak label kat kiri. Kadang-kadang kamu akan jumpa saya label n equals to 1, n equals to 2 kat sini. Pun boleh. Saya tak kisah n equals to 1 tu label kat mana. Janji label. Kiri kanan, saya terima je. Okay? Saya terima je. Not a problem. So, dua syarat kat sini. Mesti kena label n sama dengan 1, n sama dengan 2, n sama dengan 3. Mesti kena label. Kedua, mesti mula dengan n sama dengan 1. Tak kisah kita guna atau tak. Dan bergerak naik tanpa skip apa-apa nombor. Syarat ketiga, gap antara energy level mesti jadi makin kecil. Alright, syarat. Dan, tak perlu lukis sampai n infinity, boleh berhenti pada mana-mana energy level yang kamu nak. Kalau soalan hanya minta sampai n sama dengan 3, n sama dengan 3 je lah. Okay, tak ada masalah. Boleh? Question? Miss? Yes. Kalau nak label n tu kat belah kanan, Garisan tu nak sambung dengan uh, line energy tu ke? Oh tak boleh. It's not a graph. Alia thank you. Kalau Alia maksud Alia adalah kalau dia nak lukis energy and then dia nak label N sama dengan satu di sebelah kanan, line tu masih tak boleh sentuh. Thank you. Ah, uh, That is the reason why kenapa saya letak label tu kat sebelah kiri. Sebab saya tak nak line tu sentuh. Ah, uh, It's not a graph guys. It's not a graph. It's an energy level. So, dia bukan paksi X atau paksi Y. Faham maksud saya? So, dia masih tak boleh sentuh. Oh, satu lagi masalah dunia. Semua ada pembaris? Aiman especially? Alright, manusia-manusia yang buat kerja tak kemas? It's a straight 180 degree line. Okay, I know it. Satu lagi. Semua semua yang sini-sini kamu pernah buat dah hantar kat saya. Kat buku kan ada line kan? Kat buku kan ada line kan? Jangan guna line tu. Hang jangan label atas line tu terus teacher yang ni N sama dengan satu tapi tak lukis line tu. Oh sepak kepala otak. 
Jangan guna line buku tu. Boleh guna line buku tu tapi lukis lah. Lukis. Lukis line. Tahu lukis line. Haa. Okay. Ni semua perangai-perangai yang saya pernah jumpa lah. Kalau malas tu. Tak tahu nak kata. Any problem with energy level? One thing. Energy level is exactly the same as what you are drawing in SPF. The energy level is the atomic model. Clear? Dia bukan dua benda. Eh? Dia benda yang sama. Okay? So, that is your ball. That is what ball talk about. Settle lah. Okay? Because we need to know about the postulate. We need to know about the delta E. We need to know about the movement of the electron. Okay? Then only we can talk about the continuous spectrum and line spectrum. Okay. So, continuous spectrum and line spectrum, first and foremost, can I have the differences? Okay. What is the differences between continuous spectrum and line spectrum? First one. Hmm, saya siapa saya tak panggil lagi. Eng? Hmm. Continuous spectrum is white light and sunlight. Line spectrum is light emitted from a gas pitch house. Alright, the source is different. Untuk continuous spectrum, biasa kita akan guna white light. White light seperti apa yang kamu guna. Light ala Instagram light kamu tu, ring light tu. Light, white light, whatever white light on your, in your house, in your room right now. That is the white light. Ataupun sunlight. Okay. And your line spectrum, the source must be from a gas discharge tube. Mesti guna apparatus, mesti guna machine. Alright, gas discharge tube is a machine. Okay, tu beza dia. Dengan kata lain, continuous spectrum boleh wujud semula jadi. Okay, line spectrum tak boleh wujud semula jadi. Betul? Sebab line spectrum mesti melalui gas discharge tube. Satu adalah natural occasion. Satu adalah natural thing. Satu lagi is something that we need to create. Something that we need to do in the lab. Second, what is uh, what is actually continuous spectrum and what is actually line spectrum? Continuous spectrum dulu, Izzati? Contains radiation of all wavelengths. All wavelengths. Uh, ayat lengkap sayang macam biasa ada dalam nota. Okay, that is the thing. Saya nak perkataan all wavelength. So, continuous spectrum must have or must contains all wavelength. Dia akan ada semua, semua wavelength yang wujud dalam ni. Okay, dengan kata lain, if I have over here, uh, let's say 700 nanometer. So, 700 nanometer adalah satu line, satu wavelength. So, saya akan ada line pada 701. Saya akan ada line pada 702. Saya akan ada line pada 703 and so on. Every single nanometer akan ada line dia. So, you have all the wavelength until let's say 1000 nanometer. Okay? So, setiap satu nanometer yang ada tu akan ada line dia. So, it contain all wavelength. Tak ada satu empty space. Semua wavelength tu wujud dalam continuous spectrum. Itu pun nama continuous spectrum, betul? Alright? Fatin? Fatin dan Soha? What about line spectrum? Apa dia, Nadia? What about line spectrum? Specific wavelength. Specific wavelength. Uh, satu lagi, dua lagi perkataan. Discrete line, separate by Discrete length. line. Ayat macam biasa baca sendiri. Discrete line that has specific wavelength. In the other words, your line spectrum. Teacher sama, saya ada dari 700 nanometer sehingga 1000 nanometer. Tapi saya takkan ada semua penuh macam continuous wavelength. I might have only at 720 nanometer. And then kosong. Lepas tu saya jumpa pula 859 nanometer. Lepas tu kosong. Lepas tu saya jumpa pula mungkin pada 921 nanometer. Okay. So that is what we mean by discrete line. Apa maksud discrete? Satu line yang jelas dan specific. 
one line yang jelas spesifik dia tak akan langkau mana-mana wavelength dia akan duduk pada wavelength tersebut tepat that is discrete line alright and that discrete line will definitely having a specific wavelength that we can calculate later on okay and this is the main difference about continuous spectrum and line spectrum kita takkan bincang banyak pasal continuous spectrum continuous spectrum to be honest guys you only need to know these two things what is continuous spectrum how do we get continuous spectrum habis cerita yang kita nak tahu banyak sebenarnya adalah pasal line spectrum okay this is the differences yang kita nak tahu banyak adalah pasal line spectrum this thing datang dari mana how do we get this line spectrum yang tu yang kita nak tahu okay by the way this line spectrum on my on my slide right now this line spectrum zone baca dari kiri ke baca dari kanan Kanan. Kanan. Baca dari purple ke baca dari pink? Dari pink. Kita akan baca dari pink. Oh pandai dah tak payah ajarlah. Sebab apa Zul? Sebab um, jarak dia paling besar. Because of the blank area. Alright. Semua orang patut tahu because of the blank area. We'll come across this again later. Okay. Good. So, formation of line spectrum. Anybody can cheat us, kid? All right. Anybody can cheat us, kid? Anybody want to try? First thing, what happened? I'll say bagi gambar, kid. First thing, what happened? Norwich? You tell me what happened. Uh, gas is filled into a gas discharge tube. Okay, gas is filled into the gas discharge tube. This is my gas discharge tube. Jujur eh, gas discharge tube bukan semua pun. Gas discharge tube is actually this thing. This is the gas discharge tube. This is the power supply. Oh, oh, tukar pen. This is the power supply. Okay, so dia bukan berlaku semula jadi. So, this is our gas discharge tube. What Norwich say is kita masukkan gas. So, kita pun masuklah gas. We pump and inject the gas into here. Okay. So, in the gas, whatever gas yang kamu ada, semua gas datang daripada atom. Dan semua atom pegang elektron. Betul? So, first thing. Second thing. Anybody? Kita tanya laki-laki semua. Norwich dah, Safan? Azri terus habis lagu. Then an electric spark is part of the gas in the tube. Alright, we will turn on the power supply and we will provide energy. Tenaga pun masuk, gedek, 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 masuk kat situ. Okay, so when the electron has go into your gas, your gas will absorb the energy. So my question untuk Azri who is in the gas that will be absorbing the energy? The, the spark will, uh, well, the gas will, uh, will change to the atom because of the spark electric. Okay, the spark of electric, so the spark of electric akan masuk pada gas, betul? Yes. Siapa dalam gas yang akan terima tenaga tu? Siapa dalam gas yang akan absorb the spark? Uh, Saya bagi pilihan jawapan. Proton, neutron, elektron. 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 Okay. Jangan hmm. cakap gas atom. Gas atom tak buat apa weh. Gas atom duduk lah kat situ sebagai atom. Alright. The gas atom will be sitting there as an atom. Siapa yang akan absorb the energy that is only one guy? The electron. So bermula perkataan elektron kamu kena guna. Elektron will absorb the energy. So, when electron absorb the energy is like you way. Kamu tengah duduk, semua duduk atas kerusi dengan tenteram. Saya letak lilin bawah kerusi kamu sekarang. Kamu buat apa? Duduk tenteram lagi. Tak duduk tenteram dah way. Alright. Kamu takkan duduk tenteram dah. Semua duduk tenteram, saya letak saya letak energy which is lilin, saya bakar kerusi kamu duduk letak bawah. Semua duduk tak tenteram lah. So, tak tenteram bermakna dia akan bergerak naik. So, macam biasa saya tak nak mula daripada N sama dengan satu. Saya mula daripada N sama dengan dua. Alright, kalau tak kamu tak pandai. Asyik N sama dengan satu. 
So let's say teacher mula daripada N sama dengan 2. Elektron saya absorb the energy in here. And when the electron absorb the energy, Nabil, what happen? Energy level increase. Energy level increase. Energy level duduk sana diam-diam weh. Siapa yang akan increase? Uh, electron. Electron will move up. Betul. Electron will move to a higher energy level. Sebab tu saya tak suka kamu cerita guna perkataan-perkataan energy level increase. Energy level tak akan increase. N equals to 1 forever N equals to 1. N equals to 2 forever N equals to 2. Betul? Energy level tak akan increase. Dia akan duduk kat sana sebagai whatever it is. Yang akan increase adalah energy level of the electron. Okay? Energy level of the electron increase. Nabil, your choice. Nak naik sampai mana? Uh, N equal to 4. Nak naik sampai N equal to 4. Alright. Malah nak naik tangga lah tu. So, kita pun naik sampai N equal to 4. Fine. My electron goes up. Okay? Go to a higher energy level. Next, Aiman. Aiman Saad. When, after Nabil, the electron has gone up to N equal to 4, what happened next? Aiman Saad? Uh, electron, the unstable. Kenapa unstable? Uh, the... So, oh, excited state. Excited state. Bila elektron duduk pada N sama dengan 4 yang Nabil pilih tadi, this point at N equals to 4 is the excited state of that electron. Alright? Excited state will make the electron unstable. Any electron at any excited state, the electron will be unstable. Konsep dia sangat senang saya. Konsep dia adalah, Nukleus tu macam daya tarikan graviti muka bumi. Okay? Lepas tu saya baling something. This is my uh, nucleus attraction. Okay? Your nucleus attraction, your gravity. So, bila kita baling something, alright, when you throw something up, will the thing remain static up there? No. Dia akan jatuh balik. Betul? So, that is kenapa benda tu boleh dibaling ke atas? Sebab saya bagi tenaga. Saya yang baling benda tu ke atas. So, I give energy, I throw something up. But that something won't be forever up here. It will then drop back. Kenapa it will drop back? Because of the nucleus attraction. Kenapa at the excited state is unstable? Because of the nucleus attraction. So, the electron at this excited state will be unstable. Okay? And when the electron at this excited state is unstable, what happened next? Harris? Harish, when the electron at this excited state is unstable. Electron will drop back. Drop back. Harish pilih nak drop ke mana? Electron drop back. Okay, my question dua. over here. Harish pilih untuk jatuh balik kedua. My question to everybody else. Mesti jatuh balik kedua ke? Dia tak semestinya jatuh balik ke tempat yang kita naik tadi. Janji dia jatuh lagi rendah. Okay? So, dia boleh jatuh ke tiga, dia boleh jatuh ke dua, dia boleh jatuh ke satu. Let's say kita kata dia jatuh all the way ke satu. Okay? So, the electron fall. So, the first part just now is the electron at n equals to two, the electron move up to n equals to four. And then at n equals to 4, the electron drop all the way to n equals to 1. Okay? Settle. My question. Alright? My question to the boys. Anas, bila electron naik, process electron naik, what happened to the delta E? Positive. Positive. Anas juga. Why is versa? When the electron drop? Negative. negative. Alright? Kenapa positive, kenapa negative zone? Ada energy absorb, ada energy release. Energy absorb when you want to move to higher. 
when you reach the higher at the excited state is unstable it drops when the dropping happen energy release that's why it's negative button and in this process the next thing um, what happened when the energy drop i'm oh, sorry when the energy drops higher pula jadi energy drop when the electron from a higher energy level, your excited state drop to a lower energy level. What happened next? The light is emit. Light is emit, or I would say the energy will be released in the form of light. Okay, and then, um. Uh, The light pass through slit and gas prism and produce light, light spectrum. Produce light spectrum. Okay. When the energy is released, yes, energy will be released. Yang light too is actually in the form of light. Okay. The energy released in the form of light that will pass through prism, blah, 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 blah. All right. That have the light, setiap satu cahaya that will have a specific wavelength light. and frequency. All right and frequency of course all right and frequency so the light will have a very specific wavelength and frequency Betul? and i meant when the light have a very specific wavelength and frequency we will form a line in the line spectrum my question i meant the line must be from the left or from the right on your line spectrum from the left Tak boleh from the right. Kenapa mas from the left? Di sekolah Arab we. Plus, is that a must to start on the left or on the right? No, it depends on the blank space area. It depends on us at this moment. But that, it's about, it's nothing. We are the one that determine your machine going from the left or going from the right so you form a light over here ah uh, sayang assume that it's a straight line it's a super straight line okay so that is how you produce a line spectrum just a question over here is uh, not a question just a kind reminder over here is when you form a line the line will be formed because you are dropping down okay you are dropping down okay so line over here will be only formed when you have energy release. This line will be only formed because you have energy release. And energy release bermakna elektron mesti kena jatuh. Betul? Then only you have the energy release in the form of light that has specific wavelength and frequency. So katakan kalau Miss Wong ada second line over here. Kalau Miss Wong ada satu lagi line kat sini. Bermakna kita akan ada another transition. Okay. Kalau saya ada satu line lagi. Over here. Bermakna line ini bermakna saya ada another end final. Saya ada another end initial. Setuju? So untuk dapat satu line. Setiap kali kamu nampak satu line di atas line spectrum. Okay. Every single time when you come across a line in the line spectrum. Every single line over here is actually formed from an end initial and drop to an end final. Mesti. Okay. So my question over here is your energy level diagram the same thing as your line spectrum? Are they the same thing? Your atomic model your atomic model, this one, saya kata tadi, sama dengan energy level. Betul? So, soalan saya, adakah energy level sama dengan line spectrum? Benda yang sama ke? No. No. Sangat-sangat berbeza. Alright, they are not the same thing. Line spectrum adalah line spectrum. Line spectrum adalah menunjukkan the specific wavelength and frequency of the light that you produce. So, setiap satu line kat sini akan terhasil sebab satu transition. So, setiap satu line kat sini mesti kena ada end final and initial yang menghasilkan line tersebut. 
always remember that. Untuk dapat satu line ini, saya mesti kena ada N initial dan N final. Boleh? Okay. Remember that. Okay. And everything that you have said, perfect. Everything that you have said as what you have in your notes, okay. Uh, mesti mula dengan just this, just this. Mesti mula dengan elektron naik. Tak boleh mula dengan elektron turun. Kalau elektron tu tak naik, macam mana elektron tu nak turun? So you must always start with the electron absorb energy and promoted to a higher energy level. And at the higher energy level, which is the excited state, is very unstable. Alright, mesti mula dengan the electron is promoted from a ground state to a higher energy level. Very unstable at the higher energy level, then only kamu boleh cerita electron drop. Okay, then only kamu cerita electron drop and emit light, the light emitted. Nak tambah sikit boleh? The light emitted is in the form of light. Sorry. Tak payah? Okay. I change it because I change it to simpler. The light emitted is part through a slit and glass prism. Okay. Well, keep it. Keep it. Saya tak guna perkataan photon and whatsoever. A packet of light semua saya tak guna. It's easier for you, I guess. Alright, keep this. Saya dah ubah. Yes. Alright. Uh, kena tahu. Kena hafal. I wouldn't say hafal. Again, it's a story. If you know how the electron goes up, you should know how the electron come down. Okay? So, not really hafal. Okay, not really hafal. How to read line spectrum. Problems. But if you watch the video, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, if you watch it, then it's easy. I have two things. First line spectrum, second line spectrum. So, dah jawab tadi, kita bergerak pula kepada ghost iman. For the first one, how do you read? From the left to right. From the left to the right. For the second one? From, from the right to the left. From the right to the left. Iman, why? Because... For the first one, the blank space is the the biggest. Sayang satu je, tengok jarak. Blank space, very good. Just itu je. Alright? So, satu je saya nak tunjuk dalam slide ni. Anyway. It's not necessary reading from the left to the right. You can also read from the right to the left. This will then be the first line. This will then be the first line of this line spectrum. Okay? Kita masuk lebih sikit. If I say this is the Baumer series, let's see how much you know. If I say this is the Baumer series, heard of Baumer series? Good. Very yes. fast say yes. So if this is your Baumer series and uh, Imanda kata, this is my first line because I read from the left to the right. So let's say Miss Wong label, this is the first line. And kalau dia adalah first line of Baumer series, my question to the girls pula. Sharifa, what transition will form this first line? Uh, N sama dengan tiga kepada N sama dengan dua. N sama dengan tiga jatuh kepada N sama dengan dua. Setuju? Okay, so mau mengangguk. Let's, let's ask yang tak mengangguk tu. Izati, kenapa jatuh kepada N sama dengan tiga? In Bamu series, and final, and final is two. And final is two. Perfect. Okay. Bamu series straight away in your mind, and final must be two. And bila kita kata first line bermakna first transition. First transition in your Bamu series. All right. First transition in your Bamu series. And sama dengan satu. Sorry. And sama dengan dua adalah Bamu series. So, the first transition untuk Baumer series mesti adalah tiga jatuh dua. Tiga jatuh dua, dia akan hasilkan cahaya yang pertama. Cahaya pertama ini akan bagi 
the first line in the line spectrum. Very good. Let's see. If this is my line to wrapper, line A, what transition will form line A? That work out, Aina? Um, N7 to N2. N7 to N2. Let's see. So N6. N6 pula N6 tak jadi. N2. N6 pula. Okay. Alright. Let's see. Cara orang kata cara kuno adalah kamu kira salah satu lah. Yang ni tiga dua. So yang ni adalah empat dua lah. Yang ni empat jatuh dua. Yang ni lima jatuh dua. So yang tu enam jatuh dua. Betul? Yang tu cara orang kata cara tak payah fikir tak payah apalah. Hang kira je lah. Cara pandai sikit. If that is your first line, this will be your second. This will be your third. This will be your fourth line. Betul? Cara bijak sikit adalah kira line sahaja. First line, second line, third line, fourth line. Empat tambah dua. Empat tambah final dia. Line ke berapa tambah final dia dua. So, empat tambah dua, enam. So, enam jatuh ke dua. Pun boleh. Pandai sikit. Alright. So, tak payahlah nak kira sampai hujung tu. Betul? Okay, next. Let's say if I have P fun series. On top of this, I have P fun series. And I want to find the transition of this line. Dah? Tengah kira, tengah kira. Okay. Adriana? N equal to 10 to N equal to 5. N equals to 10, drop to N equals to 5. Class 7. Okay. P fun series, N final equals to 5. So that is your 6 to 5. 7 to 5. 6 to 5. Uh, 7 but to 6, Miss Wong. 8 to 5, 9 to 5, all right, then you have your 10 to 5, or easier, first line, second line, third line, fourth line, fifth line, so 5 tambah 5, 10 jatuh 5, okay, boleh, senang, pandai lah, pandai, 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 serious, uh, many people text, not many, I don't know whether from your class or not. Some people texted me that asking, teacher, kita perlu tahu sampai pifan series sahaja ke? Because you decided to go Google and you find out there is a lot more series. Oh yes, we only learn until pifan. But in fact, pifan tu pun saya dah bagi lebih dah. Alright, soalan jarang keluar sampai pifan tapi saya bagi sampai, dia, sebab dia pernah keluar. So saya keluar sampai, saya ajar sampai maksimum yang dia pernah keluar. So P fun is the max that you have in your syllabus. Don't worry about N final equals to 6, 7 yang kamu jumpa kat Google tu. Tak payah. Okay, just ignore that. So over here, I have my Lyman, Baumer, Paskin, Bracket, P fun. Jangan salah aja. Okay. Jangan salah aja is the first thing over here. Satu perkataan salah aja pun kita tak bagi maka. Sayang dia kata nama khas, hang jangan ubah nama orang tu. Okay, Diana, Diana Balkis, Lyman series and final. Diana? I need to fix my hair. Diana? Yang lain diam. Diana? Go. One. One. Sit region? Uh, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. Saya tak suka sangat kamu guna short form UV. Alright. Saya tak suka sangat kamu guna short form UV. Saya rasa setakat nak tulis ultraviolet tak ada masalah. Tapi kalau tinggal satu saat nak submit, cikgu tu duduk depan dah nak, oh tak ada kutip kertas dah lah ni. So sekarang tinggal satu minit nak tekan submit tu, kamu tak UV dan fine. Tapi selain daripada tu, I think I still prefer ultra wide. Okay? 
And apa maksud region ultraviolet over here? Remember Lyman series is formed because all the electron drop to n equals to 1. Betul? So I show you straight away. So during all this transition, yang warna merah ni, this is your Lyman series. Betul? So during your, sorry, Lyman series. So to form your Lyman series means all the transition must drop back to n equals to 1. That is your n final, n equals to 1. Agree? So every transition over here akan release cahaya. And every single cahaya akan pegang specific wavelength yang macam kawan kamu cakap tadi. So the specific wavelength semua akan jatuh duduk dalam ultraviolet region. So all the wavelength will be in the ultraviolet region. That is what we mean by the region. Okay, easy. Next, I have my Baumer series. Baukis? N final sama dengan 2. Region? Visible. Apa maksud visible sayang? Hmm. Uh, tak nampak. <laughs> Hang ni nak buat macam mana weh? <laughs> nampak ke tak nampak? Pilihan sekali lagi. Tak nampak. Tak nampak. Tak nampak. Habislah, habislah. Itu invisible weh. Visible sayang, nampak. Visible is whatever that you can see with your eyes around you with me, all right, warna merah. So, kamu nampak warna merah, that is your visible color. So, another keyword untuk Baumer series adalah colors light. Kadang-kadang dia akan bagi colors light. Okay. Bila line kamu dalam Baumer series, dia ada color. Bermakna straight away dalam otak kamu, that is my Baumer series. Kalau dia kata produce a red line. Produce a blue line, okay, in your line spectrum, betul? Line kan, setiap satu line tu ada color. Kalau dia kata dia produce blue line, red line, blah, blah, blah. Straight away in your mind, Baumer series. The moment dalam soalan kamu mention color, dia mesti adalah Baumer series. Okay, next. Paskan. Uh, Anis, Anis Izzati. And final equals to three. And final equals to three region, sayang. Infra. Infra. Infrared. 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 Sama, saya still prefer kamu tulis infrared rather than IR. Saya tahu certain buku, certain nota, certain cikgu ajar guna IR. I still prefer tulis panjang. Okay. Alright. Alah, satu perkataan je. Satu makau eh benda tu. Takkan nak tulis IR je kat saya. Alright. Ini seorang lagi. Ini Syahira. Bracket series. And final equals to four. Region. Region infrared. Infrared as well. Izati, last but not least. And final equals to five. Region infrared. Okay. Duka cita, semua kena hafal. Tapi saya rasa senang je. Hafal nama je sebenarnya. Lyman series jangan salah aja. Baumer series jangan salah aja. Paskin series jangan salah aja. It's a C-H-E-N. Bracket series double T. Jangan salah aja. P-Fun adalah P-F-U-N. F tu wujud weh. Bukan P je. Okay. Jangan salah aja. When I insist so much bermakna setiap tahun yang kita jumpa bukan tak boleh buat. Kita jumpa salah aja. Okay. Jangan salah aja, check balik. This is the correct spelling. And then, this is all your Lyman series, Paskin series and everything uh, in the form of diagram. So, kalau yang ni adalah Lyman series, that will be your Baumer series. Kenapa dia adalah Baumer series? Because everything drop to your N final equals to 2. That will be your Paskin series. And if you look at my uh, diagram over here, uh, look at the way that the electron drop. Dia tak kisah dia jatuh ke mana. Dia tak kisah jatuh dari mana. Yang kita kisah dia jatuh ke mana. Nampak? Saya tak kisah dia adalah daripada N berapa jatuh dan, dan jatuh. Saya tak kisah yang tu. Yang saya kisah N final dia berapa. Dan kalau N final dia empat straight away bila kita kata N final empat straight away in your mind you should know that is my bracket series. Okay? 
Bila soalan kata the electron drop to n equals to 5, straight away n equals to 5 bermakna Pifan series. Alright? So yang penting bukan dari mana, yang penting dia jatuh ke mana. N final is the important bit, not the N initial. Okay? Just want to remind you that. And I don't think any problem over here. Simple. Okay. Nak masuk formula sikit. Uh, we have talked about line spectrum of Pascal series for this thing. Same thing. Anas, baca dari mana? Which one is your first line? Uh, kiri. Kiri. Kiri is your first line. So let's say this is my first line. And as Anas juga. What transition will form this first line? Uh, n equal to 4 to n equal to 3. And look at the way right now. Saya dah tak tulis uh, macam tadi. N berapa jatuh berapa je. Saya akan tulis n initial berapa, n final berapa. Dan Anas, kenapa n fall to 3? The past series dia punya final dia ialah 4, eh 3. Hmm, tu lah. Tak habis kelas lagi. Dia dah start dah. <laughs> and final adalah tiga. Okay, and final adalah tiga. So, first line mesti adalah empat jatuh tiga. So, I want to use this. Go back to our Pascal series. Hang on, one second. Nak ajar formula straight away. All right. So, looking at your Pascal series only. So, Pascal series bermakna N final sama dengan 3. That is my Pascal series. Okay. Looking at the energy. Looking at the delta E, guys. First transition. Compared to first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Fifth transition. Okay. First transition and the fifth transition. Looking at the delta E. Rasa-rasa perubahan tenaga mana yang lagi banyak? Haifa? Empat jatuh tiga ataupun lapan jatuh tiga. Perubahan tenaga siapa yang lagi banyak? Lapan jatuh tiga. Delta I lapan jatuh tiga. Betul. Tak payah tengok apa pun. Tengok gak jarak aja. The only thing that I want you to look at is only the distance. If you kamu ada tingkat 8 jatuh tingkat 3, hang rasa lagi sakit berbanding 4 jatuh 3 ke 8 jatuh 3? Kalau kamu kena golek turun tangga. Betul? Mestilah 8 jatuh 3. Alright? Therefore, over here, if I have my first line, I have my second line, I have my third line, I have my fourth line, I have my fifth line tadi. Okay? So, kita tahu the second line adalah 5 jatuh 3. Yang ni adalah 6 jatuh 3. Yang ni adalah tujuh jatuh tiga. Yang ni adalah lapan jatuh tiga. And we know that looking at the gap, looking at the gap, every single gap makin besar. Bermakna delta E over here actually increases. Setuju setakat ni? Alright. If in this question, I'm not asking for the line transition, I'm not asking for anything. I only ask one thing. Okay, I only ask one thing by giving the label of I have line A, I have line B, I have line C. My question is only which line having highest energy in A, B, C. Antara A, antara B, antara C, siapa akan, tenak, siapa akan pegang delta E paling tinggi? Haifa? Apa dia? Kalau antara A, B, C, siapa pegang delta E paling tinggi? C. Agree class? Alright. And how do I know which one akan pegang frekuensi paling tinggi? What happened to the frekuensi? Anybody want to sponsor me your formula? A is the most uh, A. A. Frekuensi paling tinggi. What formula are you using? Safan say no. Safan? Suhada? Suhada? Formula? The E equals to HV. H mu kita panggil. Alright. Delta E equals to H mu. Thank you. 
Bila delta E equals to H mu is a formula, matematik sikit. Delta E increase when frequency increase. Betul? So when delta E increase, frequency increase. Bermakna along the way from A to C, delta E increase, frequency increase. So Shohada, over here, A, B, C, which one again having highest frequency? C. C, delta E paling tinggi. So frekuensi pun paling tinggi. Okay, one more formula. Uh, how do I know about the wave line? Kita try. Diana? Diana? Diana, hari ini attendance tak kira eh. Aina? Um, HC, um, per lambda. Delta E equals to oh, HC yeah. over lambda. Thank you. Bila kita ada delta E equals to HC over lambda and looking at the formula, you should know your mathematics. When delta E increase, vice versa. Inversely proportional, lambda decrease. So when you're moving from the right to the left, delta E increase, lambda decrease. Betul? Sama soalan saya. Soalan Miss Wong masih adalah yang paling tinggi. Saya nak lambda paling tinggi. A, B, C. Siapa pegang lambda paling tinggi? A. Azri? Thank you. Yang dah jawab tu. A. Lambda highest. Setuju? Okay, so happy with the formula so far? Okay, we'll use it to calculate later on. So, semua anda boleh jawab. Tak yalah, saya prepare banyak gila. Tak jadi ya. Ni. Looking only straight to the spectrum. Looking straight to the line spectrum. What series do you think it is? Balma. Why Balma, Anas? Sebab dia visible light. Ada color. Visible light. Looking at, just go through eh, tak buat. Looking at line spectrum untuk bracket series, tengok. Saya bagi hitam je. Lyman series pun Miss Wong bagi hitam. Pastern that we discussed just now pun saya bagi hitam. Blah, 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 tiba-tiba. So this tiba-tiba means is actually a Baumer series. This is what I mean by in the exam. Kalau tiba-tiba dia bagi colour macam ni straight away sayang, dalam otak kamu Baumer series. Alright. So Baumer series bermakna N final sama dengan berapa zone? And final equal to 2. And final equals to 2. I have X, Y, Z. Oh, X, Y, Z. Tiga je lah. Tak jadi. X, Y, Z, A, B, C. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. X, Y, Z, A, B, C over here. First question. I want the transition for line B. Transition for line B. Iza, Nuri. Nuriza. N initial sama dengan tujuh to N final sama dengan dua. Perfect. Setuju? Okay. Saya nak line that have the highest wave line. Tengah fikir. Aiman. X. X plus 7. Saya nak line that have the lowest frequency. Patin? X. X. And I want the line that have the highest delta E. The highest energy changes. Go. C. Kelas tujuh? Senang. Tujuh. Kalau final kamu objektif, this will be the type of question. Okay? Easy. Question so far? Happy? Basic thing, jangan tinggal benda basic. Okay? Formula. How many formula we have in total? Seven. Seven. Uh, ramai tanya dah. 
kena hafal gamis form, dia bagi tak? Fizik bagi formula. Fizik bagi formula, fizik punya pasal. No formula will be given in the exam. I again repeat, the only thing that will be given in your exam is your table of proton number and atomic mass and also list of constant. Yang lain semua kena hafal. Anas dah macam sedihnya. Ya yeah, sayang, kamu kena hafal semua formula yang ada di depan mata kamu. You have seven of that. Okay. Uh, I only want to ask before you use, I think the biggest problem adalah ramai sangat tanya bila masa nak guna formula tu. Semalam tengah malam pukul 12 duduk tanya soalan. Apa memang suka study malam-malam lah. Saya dah masuk bilik duduk atas katil barulah phone duduk bunyi tak berhenti. Alright, tak apa saya jawab je. Selagi saya tak tidur tu saya jawab lah. Okay, first question very quickly. This formula. Kita guna bila? Anybody? Open question. What do you understand about this formula? Untuk cari energy level. Untuk cari energy level. Lagi? Electron at the specific energy level. Okay. Electron. Energy of the electron at specific energy level. Okay. Kita nak cari energy most of the time. Of electron at specific N. Looking at the formula guys. Looking at the formula. Ada berapa N? Soalan Miss Wong, elektron tu bergerak tak? In the other words, you use this formula when elektron not moving. Okay. When the elektron is not moving, baca soalan. Macam mana nak tahu elektron bergerak ke tak? Bacalah soalan tu sayang. When the elektron is not moving, this is the formula. Because you only have one N. Second thing, formula must come with the unit and etc. So, the unit for E, the unit for energy over here must be Joule. Final unit must be in Joule. RH, formula ada negative ya, berhati -hati. formula ada negative, make sure negative tu ada. The RH is a constant, but we have two value for RH. Okay, what is the two value by the way? Uh, the first value for RH? 2.5. Times 10 power negative 18 joule. 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joule. Good. One more. One more. 1.097 times 10 power of 7 meter. All right. Meter. Daniel. Haris Daniel. Untuk equation pertama, akhir value mana kita guna? Yang atas. Ham baca pun malas. Ham bagi dua perkataan kat saya masa ham buka mic. Yang atas. 2.18 oh. darab 10 kosa ni telefon belas jol. Alright, thank you. Kita ada dua formula, uh, kita ada dua formula pula. Kita ada dua value RH, 2.18 times 10 to the power negative 18 joule and also 1.097 times 10 to the power 7 meter. Nak tahu mana satu yang kita nak guna? Senang je. Tengok dia adalah formula siapa. Kalau dia adalah energy pasal Joe, so formula yang kita guna pun adalah Joe. Talking about RH value, so we fix the RH value for everyone first. The RH value untuk this formula. The RH value untuk this formula. Okay, Azri, value? 2.18 darab dengan 10 negatif 18. Negatif 18. Yeah. Unit untuk delta E, Azri? Joe. Joe. Next, I have another RH on my screen. Another RH over here. Uh, Fazini? Fazini? Ya. Yeah. Uh, nak kena guna yang 1 point kuasa 97 darab dengan 10 kuasa 7. Sebab? Sebab kita nak cari wavelength. Kita nak cari wavelength. Wavelength kat sini mesti meter. Kenapa wavelength kat sini mesti meter sayang? Sebab meter. Okay so unit dia mesti meter. Tak boleh nanometer. So I have uh, the four formula over here. We have talked about when to use this formula. When the electron is not moving. So bila masa nak guna uh, formula kat bawah? Obviously when the electron is moving. 
Alright, kamu mesti kena ada electron at n initial berapa? Electron at n final berapa? And looking at the formula, ladies and gentlemen, n initial minus n final. Okay. And the biggest difference between these two formula, sama. Reason dia bila masa, sama. When the electron is moving. Bila masa nak guna dua formula tu, tengok soalan nak apa. Kalau soalan nak energy, hang nak cari energy, hang guna formula energy lah. Betul? Soalan nak wavelength ataupun soalan bagi wavelength, then kita guna formula wavelength lah. Betul? Tapi beza dia sayang, satu je. Looking at the formula, N1, N2. Okay, my question is my formula right now complete for this one? Apa lagi kena ada kat belakang? N satu lagi kecil daripada N dua. N satu lebih kecil daripada N dua. So saya tak kisah N initial berapa, saya tak kisah N final berapa tapi N satu saya mesti kena lebih kecil daripada N dua. Dengan kata lain, if I'm talking about Baumer series just now. If we are talking about Baumer series just now, let's say my transition N initial is 5, my N final is 2. Okay, let's say lah. So over here, N initial akan jadi 5, N final akan jadi 2. Tapi kat sini, N1 berapa? 2. Thank you for the fingers. Alright, N1 mesti 2, N2 mesti 5. Okay, sebab N1 mesti lebih kecil daripada N2. Itu cara nak guna formula. Alright. Ada masalah nak guna formula? Miss. Yes. Uh, RH uh, 1.097 times 10 to the of 7, unit dia M ke M negative 1? M. Saya rasa. Tengok list of constant kamu. M ke M negatif 1, saya sebut M. Tanya unit saya tak ingat lah saya. Uh, looking at your list of concern. M negatif 1. M ke M negatif 1? M negatif 1. M negatif 1. Salah saya. Thank you. M negatif 1. M negatif 1. To cancel off the M I guess. Alright. Okay. So be very careful with the unit of RH mana satu nak guna. Kenapa ada dua? Dan bila masa nak guna 2.18 darab 10 kuasa negatif 18, bila masa nak guna 1.097 darab 10 kuasa 7. Okay. Ada masalah nak hafal formula? Okay. Beli ketan maju yang besar-besar lekat. Uh, ataupun hantar formula ni kat Shopee print jadi banner lekat kat bilik. Like how you print the poster of whatever that you like. Okay. Yang ni tak ada apa kat sini kita akan go along the way. Saya just nak make sure... Saya nak bagi tahu apa yang biasa kita akan carilah. This adalah benda yang kita akan cari. This adalah benda yang kita akan cari. Alright, yang Miss Wong tak highlight tu, yang kita tak highlight tu adalah constant. Yang kita tak highlight tu adalah constant. Kita dah ada H tu adalah plan constant, C tu adalah speed of light. Okay, benda tu dah ada, guna je. Okay, so yang tu tak ada masalah. Kita balik kepada unit sikit, delta E adalah joule. Frekuensi, kamu banyak guna hertz tapi sebenarnya lagi nak senang S negative 1. Okay, frekuensi is S negative 1, lambda is meter, delta E is joule, lambda is meter. Okay, saya fokus pada unit je kat sini. Formula ni tak ada apa, senang nak guna. Okay, alright. Any problem so far? Uh, why I explain that everything because I don't want you to memorize them by heart. Bo postulate, banyak benda nak kena hafal. Mungkin kamu rasa banyaknya teacher bo postulate lagi, line spectrum lagi. Benda tu is a story. Kalau kamu faham, kamu tak perlu hafal. Kamu hafal sebab you don't bother to understand. Kalau kamu dah faham, if you can draw the ball atomic model, you should be able to explain the postulate. Okay. If you can understand the line spectrum, line yang ni adalah berapa jatuh berapa, line yang ni adalah berapa jatuh berapa, kamu tak perlu hafal. Kamu tahu macam mana dia naik, macam mana dia jatuh. Okay? So, I don't want you memorize by heart. Saya tak nak kamu hafal. Okay? So, exercise. 
just very quickly, uh, we have a few more minutes. We have about 10, 20 minutes. Which question that you cannot do gila-gila? Baca tak faham langsung. Zon? Sepuluh. Okay. Soalan sepuluh, sebelas, dua belas, whatever. Uh, dia adalah berkaitan dengan ionization energy. So boleh tinggal saat ataupun kamu boleh tengok uh, video ionization energy dan baru kamu buat. Okay. Question one until nine. Any question yang tak boleh buat? Semua boleh buat? Cuba lah. Tak ya? Boleh cancel kelas ya? Miss, 9C. 9C. Okay. Lagi? Uh, miss, macam mana nak buat ayat untuk describe transition? Okay, we'll talk about that. Describe transition soalan dua, saya rasa. Betul. Okay. Alright, tak apa. Soalan sembilan dulu. Take a quick look. The diagram below shows several energy level of an electron in a hydrogen atom. Okay. That means the energy needed when to excite an electron from A to E. So I have electron from A wanted to go all the way up to E. So, so Alan teacher, to calculate your A, what formula do you use? Do you know A, B, C, D, E is N equals to berapa? No. Kita tak tahu dia adalah N sama dengan berapa. Betul. So kalau kita tak tahu dia adalah N sama dengan berapa, apa yang diberi hanya adalah energy of that N. Alright, energy of that energy level is given. So what formula are we going to use over here is your delta E equals to lau. E final minus E initial. E final <laughs> minus E initial. My tips over here is make sure when you take the final and initial, you take the negative as well. All right, the negative and uh, positive must be in your calculation as well. And over here, if I have uh, go way up, therefore that will definitely be my initial. That will definitely be my final. Okay, agree with that? Then electron going up. Rasa-rasa jawapan kamu positif ke negatif? Uh, Isa duk tambah positif. Jawapan akhir, positif or negatif? Positif. Positif. Dan siapa yang dah kira atas kertas kamu sekarang kena ada delta E equals to positif bla bla bla. Simbol positif wajib. Ya yeah, yang tak ada tu sila tambah. Alright betul Izzah duk tambah positif tadi. I knew it. Apa ni kan? Itulah yang kamu akan salah. So make sure your final answer right now is positif. Saya tak kira tapi saya tahu dia mesti positif because your electron is going up. Okay. Thank you. B. Calculate the wavelength of the photon when electron drop from D to B. So I have D drop to B and the question asking for lambda. So for this question, kamu kena kira dua kali. Kamu kena guna formula apa untuk soalan B? Because question asking for lambda. Boleh tak kira lambda terus? Tak, Iman? Iman kira guna formula apa dulu? Ya, yeah, tadi ikut tu E final minus E initial. Okay, lepas tu? Then the E ikut tu HC over lambda. And then yang kedua kamu akan guna delta E equals to HC over lambda. My question, Iman. Jawapan delta E kat sini. Iman dapat apa? Negatif. Negatif. So, alright, a bit of tips guys. Bila kamu kira delta E, kamu akan dapat negatif. My question, bila masukkan value delta E kat sini, masuk tak negative sign? No. Thank you untuk yang geling pala. Ignore negative sign. Alright, kenapa ignore negative sign? Because lambda tak boleh jadi jawapan negatif. Your lambda over here must always be positive integer. Alright, mesti akan jadi positive value sentiasa. Okay, settle. So, dua kali kira. 
So, kawan kamu tanya, which electron transition is in the diagram have the lowest wavelength and the highest frequency when all electron drop from line E? From line E. So, let's see. Drop from line E bermakna saya boleh jatuh daripada E kepada D, kepada C, kepada B, kepada A. So, from line E, I can drop to D. From line E, I can drop to C. From line E, I can drop to B. From line E, I can drop to A. Contohin sikit saya. So, yang pertama, yang kedua, yang ketiga, yang keempat. Nabil, transition mana yang akan ada delta E paling besar? E to A. E to A. So, delta E kat sini paling tinggi. Dengan kata lain, delta E kat sini paling rendah. Setuju kelas? Formula. Saya guna formula yang ada ni dulu. Delta E equals to HC over lambda. Delta E equals to HC over lambda. Delta E tinggi bermakna wavelength rendah. Okay. Tapi sekarang soalan tak nak wavelength rendah. Soalan nak wavelength tinggi. Longest wavelength. So I want the longest wavelength. Which mean I want the lowest energy. Setuju? So which transition? Soalan tanya. Electron transition. So which transition will give you the longest wavelength? Betul? Dan jawapan kamu jangan jawab lain satu. Lain satu tu saya yang tulis. So whenever question having the word electron transition... Your answer untuk C, untuk longest wavelength, ada dua jawapan eh. Longest wavelength is when, jawab, electron drop. Drop from mana ke mana? From line, sorry, from line berapa to line berapa? Okay, so in this case, from line E to line D. Whenever is transition, mesti kena ada from and to. Dari mana ke mana. Okay, dari mana ke mana, mesti. Alright, next. Highest frequency. So, line mana yang ada highest frequency, class? Anybody want to try? A. A. Sama juga. Yang ni. Sama juga cara. Bukan sama juga jawapan. Sama juga cara. Kenapa adalah yang ni? Because looking at the frequency. So kita guna formula frequency. Delta E equals to H mu. Saya nak highest frequency. Bermakna saya nak highest energy. Highest energy. Sama jawapan akan jadi lebih kurang sama. Highest frequency is when electron from. Line E drop to line A. The moment ada perkataan transition, elektron kamu kena dari mana ke mana. Okay? Alright. So, lukis je lah. Lukis je lah. Okay. Question 2 just now, I think. Ayah. Tadi siapa tanya? Soalan ni ke? Ayah nak tanya? Betul. Lebih kurang lah. Ayah yang kena explain betul. Okay? Alright. When the question say describe, describe the transition of electrons that led to blah, blah, blah. Whenever is describe transition. Describe means explain. Sama juga dengan perkataan discuss. Same. Okay. We start, I give you one example answer. Line the blue. This is a Baumer series. So, kalau Baumer series, uh, saya tak puas hati. Diana? Diana, mm -hmm. if you encounter any problems or what so, yes, Diana? Text me. I want to know why later. No rush. Line yes, W. What transition uh, will give rise to line W of this Baumer series? Electrons drop from N equals to 4 to N equals to 2. 
And final is two. And two. initial is four. four. Setuju? And jawapan now is simple gila. When the electron drop from n equals to four to n equals to two. My question, how, why the electron will drop from n to four, n four to n two? Explain. All right? Explain. So, kamu kena explain the transition bagi tahu uh, when energy is absorbed by the electron, electron is excited, is excites to n equals to 4. Excited state kita sekarang excited state, uh, n equals to 4. At n equals to 4, the excited state, guna balik ayat dan nota aja. The excited state, electron is very unstable. So, when the electron is very unstable, electron drops. Electron drops to a lower energy level. Lower energy level. N equals to 2. Alright. Comma. Bauma. Series. Bagi tahu kenapa N equals to 2? Sebab Bauma's series. Okay. Uh, electron drop. Produce ataupun emit a light that has a specific wavelength and frequency that form line W. Okay. Jawapan kamu tak patut jadi satu ayat. Uh, ayat kamu tak salah. Whatever Norway say just now, Norway will get one mark. Okay, Norway will get one mark. But when we say describe the transition of electron that led to the line the W, Y or whatsoever line yang dia tanya, belakang-belakang tu dia ada tanya lagi. When you say the electron drop from N equals to 4 to N equals to 2, the question is why the electron will drop? Okay. Dari awal, kenapa elektron tu akan jatuh? Sebab elektron tu bergerak naik dulu. Okay, the only things that make your answer different over here from our notes is when we say electron is excited to, excited to minor. When we say excited state, tadi kita hanya cerita excited state is very unstable, betul? Now you need to mention your excited state adalah kat mana. And just now we only say that the electron drop to a lower energy level. Sekarang kita kena cakap the lower energy level adalah berapa. Okay, itu je beza dia. Guna balik ayat dalam nota kamu, cuma bagi tahu in specific energy level saya adalah energy level berapa, excited state saya berapa. Drop to lower energy level tu berapa. Itu je beza dia. Okay. Question. No. Alright, yes. No rush. No, 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 no. Okay. Alright, kalau tak ada. Soalan empat, which formula we are using? Natasha? One over lambda. Natasha? One over lambda R H Maka one Satu per N initial kuasa dua Minus Kuasa dua Initial One over lambda sayang And one and 1 kuasa 2 minus 1 per N 2 kuasa 2 and uh, N 1 lebih besar pada N 2 <laughs> N 1 
Lebih kecil pada Endo. My question. N1 yang kamu isi kat sini adalah berapa? Lima. N1 lima? Eh. Dua dua. Plus. N2. N1 sama dengan berapa? Lapan. Nabil kata N1 lapan. N2? Eh, N1 lima. N2 lapan. Kenapa N2 lapan? Uh, Uh, in third line. Third line of the Pifan series, Natasha. Pifan series. And final berapa? N uh, lima. Third line bermakna N lapan jatuh N lima. Third line mesti adalah lapan jatuh lima dan only is the third line in the Pifan series and since in this formula N1 must be smaller than N2 therefore N1 mesti adalah five and two mesti adalah lapan. Natasha juga. What is the value of RH that you are using here? Um, satu point kosong sembilan tujuh darat sepuluh kosong tujuh. Okay. Alright, kita banyak belajar teori hari ni. So, along the way, kamu akan settle kan? Sebab tak ada siapa tanya soalan kat sini. So, esok kelas kita adalah kelas latihan je. Saya akan bagi soalan on the spot kita kira. Alright, mungkin saya akan guna balik soalan ni. Mungkin saya akan recycle soalan ni and saya tambah lagi soalan dalam tu. And mungkin saya akan bagi soalan lebih. Okay. So, I think at this moment is hafal formula tu. Make sure you know when to use the formula and jangan salah tekan kalkulator. Chapter ni saya rasa biggest, biggest, biggest problem ever in this chapter is budak substitute semua benda betul, formula semua benda betul, jawapan salah. Magic. Suddenly. Jawapan salah. I don't know why. Yang gelak-gelak tu dia mesti pernah kena dah lah. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing, formula mesti akan dapat markah. So, soalan kamu, solution kamu, right? Um, your solution always start with the formula. Jangan skip. Formula over the one mark. Hang salah kira kat bawah formula dapat satu markah. Why not? Okay, formula mesti kena tulis. So, finish off your tutorial. Uh, yang tak buat lagi, buat. Saya rasa Natasha tak buat lagi. So, kira habiskan semua soalan kamu. Kita akan buat latihan sikit esok. Kita akan buat latihan lebih esok. Okay. And saya akan bagi jawapan akhir untuk setiap jawapan esok. <coughs> to see whether it's correct or not. Okay. So, kalau tak ada apa, I think that's it for today. And discuss among you guys whether you want the class tomorrow at 3, macam ikut timetable, ataupun you want it to be earlier or whatsoever. I can do it after 12. Okay? So let me know in the group. by tonight. Boleh? Okay? okay? Kalau tak ada apa, I think I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day and take good care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you, miss. 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 Thank you, miss.